Hello everybody, welcome back to Geeks and Barbells where we uh, just embrace the geek. We have fun. We do what we feel like, which is pretty much what everybody does, but we do it better because, let's face it, we're just cooler because geeks are the best. There's no one who can really beat geeks because a true geek, a penultimate geek, the pinnacle of geekness is to accept the fact that it doesn't matter what it is that you like in your life, it can be geeky if you put enough attention to it. If you really just focus in and say, I love making paddles for kayaks so much that I'm going to put so much attention and love into this thing that I'm going to make the best paddles for kayaks that anyone's ever seen. And if anybody asks me about doing paddles, I'm going to talk to them about this craft for the next seven hours and be so excited that even though they have never even thought about a paddle in their life, they will now want to learn a little bit more and hopefully have if they've been listening to you for seven hours now that I think about it. Now, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Um, this is going to be part of the Geeks and Barbells podcast series. I wanted to talk about something pretty important to me because I find... Uh, as someone who has always been in the creative space, we will say, even in many of my jobs, which were managerial in a sense, because they tended to be in the health sphere, you had to have a certain sense of creativity. But I mean, in my personal life, and obviously with what I'm trying to do here, uh, there is a huge amount of creative. I mean, I, I'm writing poetry, talking about books, talking about gaming, and... Uh, even when we're talking about the physical arts, so if you're talking about training, if you're talking about movement, all these things require aspects of creativity. I mean, everything requires creativity. As I said before, even if you're making a paddle for a kayak, it is a creative act, If you, especially if you love it a lot and you're really diving full deep into it. And I wanted to talk about internal versus external energy. And this has been one of my biggest issues in my life. And when I when I tend to really, really focus and, and give it my all, I feel so much better when I really keep these concepts in my head. And so what do I mean by internal and external energy? So internal energy is obviously the energy your body is producing just from simple food. We will say it's not just food obviously it's how well you sleep it is um, uh, how much food you've eaten so getting enough calories it is about making sure that you have all the vitamins and minerals that you need so you have to basically think of the internal energy as is your body actually functioning at at least a really good capacity we'll say like at least at 80 percent capacity in terms of being able to produce what it needs to to just feel good is everything running properly is all the nutrients your body needs and you can consider sleep to be a nutrient you can consider movement uh, sunlight all these things to be nutrients that your system needs to actually produce that internal energy and then once that is in place once the foundation because that's what internal energy is it is the foundation for feeling good just overall and we all know this i mean just in general if you don't have a good internal energy there's a very likely chance that you're not going to enjoy uh, a good external life you're not going to be able to pull in more energy and be at really your maximum potential from the external environment because if you slept for two hours and you feel horrendous even when you go to do something you really love or even though you might feel good in that moment when it's happening you're not enjoying it as much as you could have you're not pulling as much as you could have because you feel so shitty from the bad sleep or from having stayed up late last night uh, drinking or from having ate you know, McDonald's for breakfast, lunch, and supper for the last week. You know this. Everyone has experienced this. The biggest problem is for many people, it's become such a normal part of their life to get like four or five hours of sleep. There's no, even within that four or five hours of sleep, there's no routine to the sleep habits. They don't eat enough or they eat way too little. And when they do eat, it's all over the place. There's junk, there's too much snacking. Uh, you know, they're not getting enough movement. Just in walking, they, no fresh air, no sunlight because everyone's always inside. And this happens a lot within we will call it the, the geek community and how I'm thinking about it from the sense of people who spend a lot of time gaming, watching anime, uh, you know, really more in the uh, I'm inside kind of environment, uh, working on your computer, doing stuff in your computer, spending all your time reading books. You know, there's a lot of benefits to those things and there's a lot of great um, 
things that you can pull from those things. But if you're just not taking care of yourself, not only are you not going to appreciate those things as much, but you also have a tendency to just not take care of your internal energy as much uh, because you're so focused on the other stuff. And a lot of people, let's face it, are just not taking good care of themselves overall in our day to day lives. But let's say you're getting that stuff done. Let's say you've you focused on your internal energy. You're taking care of your sleep. You're taking care of your body. You're taking care of your mental state. Well, then external energy becomes extremely important. How do you pull in external energy? It's pretty damn simple. It's basically the concept of are you doing things you actually enjoy? Now, that does not mean, uh, you know, if you are someone who likes to game, that does not mean you're literally only gaming all the time. You can pull in good energy from things that you do consider to be work. You can have even just changing your mindset about your work. So some people, let's face it, they have jobs that they don't really enjoy. Now, in the ideal world, in utopia, I'd love to say, okay, just quit your job, find your perfect job. Everything's going to be fine. I hate this guru bush bullshit. Okay. If you can do that, if you know there's a kind of work that you would love to do and it would bring you a lot of joy, if you can go for it, go for it. I'll never say you cannot do that. But there's always this realistic sense you also have have to keep in your mind that not everyone's going to have this perfect freaking work environment. And even the people who do do jobs that they love, so let's say you think of something, someone like an author, it still becomes work after a while. There's going to be huge aspects of that writing that's going to be monotonous, it's going to be dull, it's going to be very difficult, you're going to wake up on days and want to punch yourself in the forehead. This is going to happen with every job. But you still, at least on the overall grand scheme of things, are enjoying it. Now, you can change your mindset in a job that you might not enjoy that much to maybe focus on at least taking pleasure and enjoyment out of doing something well. You can find pleasure in the company you have at work, you know, finding good friends. Uh, and this whole idea that work is separate from life and work-life balance is bullshit. If you work a normal job like most people, that's 40 to 50 hours a week, if you are not taking enjoyment out of your work in some sense, if you are not making friends at work, who maybe they don't have to be the best friends of your life, or at least people you can enjoy and have the commonality with, that's insane. Uh, as someone who used to manage, who has managed multiple stores and had pretty big volume of employees, I've argued black and blue with owners of stores and stuff like that, that saying that employees shouldn't have friendships between each other even intimate relationships is an insanity that only someone in a higher up position can come up with as a boss i've made plenty of friends at work i've had younger employees who've been friends with older employees i if we get along we get along and as far as i'm concerned the more intimate our relationship is from a friendship perspective or more the better we should work together because we should be a, a good friendship and good relationships have to do with communication as far as I'm concerned. So look for what you can in your work environment to make it better, to make it more enjoyable for you. Hyper-focus on those things. Do the best that you can. And of course, if you are truly unhappy in a place, fuck, if you can get out of it, get the fuck out of it because that's really important also because you can have a great internal environment, really be producing great internal energy. And then if you have a horrendous work environment, that's just going to drain you constantly, make you feel like garbage. And if you want to live a really creative life, if you want to have a, a fun time, even with your pleasures, like if you are someone who loves to read and that's your escape from work, well, guess what? If you had a good work environment, you would enjoy your books even more. People, there's that kind of like myth of the uh, despairing artist kind of where we, we've kind of hyped up this idea that if you feel bad or have a shitty life, you can like produce art better. I think that's crap. I think it just so happens that some of the very popular artists in the world have had depression and whatnot. But let's face it, many of them grew up in really shitty environments. And they would have still had that great creativity if they had a good life. Maybe they didn't produce as much if they were happy. But guess what? Uh, I'd much rather be happy and produce a little bit less art or whatever it is uh, and, and, and enjoy my life 
and go through life miserable just because we wouldn't have had a fucking Picasso painting or a Michelangelo statue. I'm pretty sure those people would have preferred to be happy, okay, and have a, a fulfilling life. So this is a bit of a, an insane concept that people have. So the, the main gist of it is just that you really want to focus on those two aspects of your life. It's not only making sure that you're healthy enough so that your body is, let's say, primed and ready so that when external uh, inputs come in, you can really take advantage of those things to the maximum of your ability and enjoy them to the fullest. And not only enjoy them to the fullest, but open yourself up to as many possibilities and options as you can with those external inputs. No, again, that can, it's your work environment, which is super important. But it's also what you do at home, what you do with your friends, what you do with your family, your hobbies that you have for yourself. You know, I know so many people who say like, I, I, I love whatever. I love diving. I love, uh, I love reading. I love gaming. I love this. I love that. And they almost never do it. They almost never do it. And they come up with so many excuses of how they're busy in their life. They're this, they're that. And it's, it's not to take away the legitimacy of those things. But if something is a, a prior, not only a priority to you, but if it's something that you actually enjoy, you have to build it into your life. Uh, becoming an adult, I think many people have messed up mentalities of what it is to be an adult because we all are still very childish and kiddish in our own way, even as we grow older. The important thing is not that you become this stuck up like, I'm a, I'm a big boy now and I've got to be like this, be like that. Being an adult means recognizing that you only have so much time in your life, so many things you can do. And so at any moment, you might die and so don't waste your time. I see this thing, you know, YOLO, you only live once. And people use that as a concept to be like, yeah, you should just get smashed all the time and go to parties. And if that genuinely makes you happy, go for it. But in general, past the age of 18 years old, that is not what makes people feel happy. And most people who feel happy with that stuff only feel happy because they feel miserable in their life and they use that as an escape. That's not true happiness. You want to make the time and prioritize your experiences. Experience is all we have. So if your friends really matter to you, you make the time, you build them into your routine, build your family into your routine, you build your hobbies, whether it's gaming, whether it's reading, whether it's going out and playing sports, whatever your hobby is, programming, doesn't matter make the time for it, but you have to build that into your routine. That's what being an adult means. It means, okay, I only have so much time. I have these priorities. I can't do everything, but this really makes me feel good. And I'm not just going to keep saying, oh, woe is me. Woe is me. I don't have time for this. I'm going to make that time. Why? Because I know that if I make that time, I'm going to feel good. And maybe that means you have to sacrifice something else. That's why you have to think about it. That's what it means to be an adult. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with accepting the fact that sometimes you need to sacrifice some things to get the benefits of others because those other things are more important. The problem is nowadays is we kind of have this FOMO, this fear of missing out. Everybody wants to try to do everything, but you, you just can't. You can't do everything. You got to choose certain things, prioritize, and maybe that will change over the course of your life. Maybe for 10 years, you know, gaming will be your focus. But then after that, you really want to up your book game or you want to, you know, spend more time with specific friends or family or learning another skill like coding. And so, yes, uh, gaming is going to take a, a back, go on the back burner while you focus on that other thing, that new skill that you want to learn. doesn't mean you won't do it. You're going to be prioritizing something else. We all shift and change. You have to be willing to evolve with the times. And so that's extremely important it's very difficult it's not easy to prioritize life can throw you all over the place especially if you have family uh, especially if you have little kids especially as you get older for people who are younger who don't have that worry it's like this is phenomenal it means that you can really really routine like plan to the utmost and make your life freaking awesome i i, I really wish i had started thinking like this when i was much much younger because i wasted 
so much time at the pinnacle of my youth when I, I didn't have any worries financially. I had so much free time. Uh, there was just a crazy amount of stuff I could have learned and done that I would have loved. Instead, I kind of breezed and drifted through things all over the place. Many times as younger people, we, we think we're doing a lot of stuff that we like, but we're just doing stuff to distract ourselves with no real focus of what we're getting from it. Even when it has to do with pleasurable full things like gaming, like books and whatnot. So think about that. Uh, really think about how is your internal and external environment. Are you taking care of yourself so that you can really enjoy what you're doing to the maximum and, and, and really pull as much as you can? Because like I said, man, it's, it's not something people want to talk about, but we could die. I could die tomorrow. I could die today. I could have a heart attack in an hour from now. And if I'm not doing stuff that actually makes me feel good after it, not just good, like even from an energy perspective, like good in my heart. You know, so a lot of people waste time doing stuff or they do things that make them feel good in a moment impulsively or instant gratification kind of stuff. But then they feel crappy about it after even ethically. There's a lot of people just ugh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll do a video about that also uh, about, you know, doing things that actually align with what you believe in truly in your heart. Most people don't think about that. I think that'll be my my next thought process because that's extremely important for people who want to live a creative life is doing stuff that actually makes you genuinely feel good to the point where a day two days a week two weeks later it does you're not thinking back and it going like uh with shame you know so uh that'll be something i'll discuss next time so let me know your thoughts comment below like subscribe check out the website geeksandbarbells.com i will be making more review videos soon and just geeking out on stuff the last week has been all over the place so thanks for listening and uh see you around